Hello, I'm Josie Taylor. Gambling at Crown Casino generates billions of dollars for the state government and the company employs 12,000 people. But some of those employees describe work inside the casino as chaotic and largely unregulated in a book published by Deakin University. The casino maintains the allegations are made up and will have no impact on how it runs its business. But as Kirsten Vaness reports, the claims reignite questions about just who's watching Crown Casino. In the words of Australia's largest casino, there's always something happening at Crown. With its 300 gaming tables and thousands of poker machines running 24 hours a day, a new study is asking just what is going on. This is the first time that interviews with those who work there have been conducted because Crown has not been cooperative in research. Yeah. Linda Hancock interviewed 225 casino staff, all union members, for her book Regulatory Failure, The Case of Crown Casino and came up with some startling responses. Oh, the fights would be every night. The thing is, they're not showing it anymore, right? That's what I have to laugh at. With the ambulance report that came out, I'm sitting here going, three fights? Yeah, bull****. Staff kept saying people are intoxicated all the time. I see them every shift. There are fights. There's alcohol-related violence. And so we started to look in more detail at this in terms of, well, why aren't they losing their licence? Why aren't they being fined? As in any licensed venue, it's an offence to serve alcohol to an intoxicated person. But Ms Hancock says almost 10% of staff surveyed feel under pressure by management to keep people drinking. And the ones that are in charge turn a blind eye because if they kick them all out and everything, then where's the money going? They're going to be a lot more lenient on how drunk they are before they stop them from playing. You get all the money you can before they eventually tell them. It's also an offence for gaming venues to knowingly allow a person to gamble while intoxicated. Oh, they fall off, they get drunk sit at the machines, go to sleep, fall off the chairs, split their heads open. They won't even go to the toilet. They will just sit there and just we go to the toilet at the machine. Now I would say that for a venue as public as Crown, as big as Crown, I think we need to know more about what the regulator's doing. Both the Victorian Commission for Gambling Regulation and the Alcohol Licensing Authority, Responsible Alcohol Victoria, declined to comment. Crown Casino strongly denies the allegations in Ms Hancock's book. If any of these people want to come forward and give evidence, supply some substance for these allegations, then I welcome them to do it. This is not an academic exercise. This is mudslinging by Linda Hancock. Do you think the responses are inaccurate, they're not true? Well, why should I believe otherwise? Um, I don't believe they're true. As the current employer of the year in Victoria and Australia, Crown prides itself on its staff treatment and it denies any insinuation in the book that staff are rewarded for meeting alcohol service targets. Their overriding KPI is to ensure the integrity of that licensed premises. You know, they do not get big pats on the back because, you know, you serve ten more beers than, than the next place. But concerns about regulations have been raised since the casino opened in the 1990s. Back in 1995, I uh, raised concerns that Crown uh, was getting absolutely everything and anything it wanted. It was writing the regulations and uh, this book really shows that what I was worried about then has proved true. Total regulatory failure. Tim Faulkner helped draft the legislation for Crown Casino in the early days and has since campaigned against problem gambling. He says the problem with Crown's responsible gambling code of conduct is that it's left to be implemented by casino staff. There's an old saying, let no man be a judge in his own cause. And these people really have to be judges in their own cause. Uh, so you need somebody separate from the casino to, to look after it, and, and that, to me, is the inspectors. But Crown says it has gaming liaison officers which look out for signs of problem gambling and is under constant scrutiny. 
The role of the alcohol regulator became very publicly involved two years ago when AFL player Brendan Favola was seen drunk at the Brownlow. The most serious thing we could find that Crown had been pulled up for was about a $3,000 fine after the Favola incident and what's called an enforcement undertaking. Do you think some people might brand you as simply anti-casino? I'm not anti-gambling. I think it would be hard to be anti-gambling because everyone says it's here to stay and people do enjoy it if it's done safely. But I think it's got to the ramped up stage here where our machines are out of control. Crown says it's shining a light on the problem gambling debate. We participate in the debate because we treat it very seriously. The people who are employed at Crown, and I invite you, come down with the ABC crew and I'll take you through the customer support centre and show you what they do. All right? these Can are we very, go to the gaming these, area? These are very dedicated people. Now, I'm not going to let you on the gaming area. Quite frankly, our customers don't want to see you on the gaming area. What sort of an effect will this book have on Crown Casino? It will have no effect on us whatsoever. As I said to you in the beginning, the onus is on Linda Hancock, Tim Costello and others to bring some substance to this debate. I will not take them seriously. Crown will not take them seriously until they accept that the onus of proof is on them. I'm very pleased and proud to be part of this launch. The book so is being taken seriously by the independent senator, Nick Xenophon, who wants to use it as a catalyst for reform. This research needs to be considered by the Federal Parliamentary Inquiry into Gambling Reform because I think it shows a, an inconsistent approach, a very poor approach to gambling regulation for casinos around the country, and Crown Casino is the uh, most blatant example. The Victorian government reaps about $1.7 billion in gambling revenue each year. And that's why anti-gambling campaigners say the federal government should intervene. I've given up on state governments ever doing anything serious, both sides of politics. Uh, they are the greatest addicts. They are addicted to the money. It would seem that it would be a fantastic thing if a new government could pilot closing 24-hour venues for a six-month period. You'd have screams of anguish and you'd have all sorts of lobby groups. But who's paying in the end for the violence? It's really us, the citizens.